In this video, I will explore a method of using GPS or GNSS RTK control points in conjunction with an on-the-ground EDM traverse. The GNSS portion of the survey was performed for the purpose of locating targets for a drone mapping effort. The EDM traverse was performed to locate boundary monuments and other detailed information not visible from the drone. The GPS target locations were surveyed utilizing a published network solution. This is common practice and although usually yields acceptable results, in some cases such as this, the inherent error of a network solution produced an unacceptable result when compared to the EDM measurements. It is important to remember that GPS network solutions error is a variable that always needs to be considered when determining the best practices for a survey. There are several factors involved, but one variable that must always be taken into account is the distance from the base point in the network. The further you are from the base point of the network to your site, the greater the error and the more need for correction or an adjusted field procedure. In this example, GNSS located points 204 and 207 were occupied as point numbers 104 and 107 for the EDM traverse. The traverse was then run around the building, locating monuments in detail, and then closing back into GPS points 213 and 214. Those were located with the EDM as points 132 and 133, respectively. Okay, here is my site. Um, and included in here are GPS located target points that were used for the purpose of a drone capture for rendering detailed information around the site. This particular part of the traverse, which was part of multiple traverses, but I'm going to simplify this by just going through one portion of it, but it was starting with two of these GPS points and traversing around the perimeter, picking up detail, fence lines, monuments and such and then closing back in to two other GPS points. And you'll see that the inherent error that there is in the GPS survey um, produced results that weren't quite tight enough for what I needed for a boundary survey. And that is due to the fact that I have inherent error in the original points. And you can tell that by when you set up on one point, backside another point, there is error in there. That's typical. You're going to see that, and that's easy to check on any time that you uh, do a GPS survey and then check it with EDM. You're always going to pick up a little bit of error, and that tells you how much error you should be expecting on that survey. So I've opened up a brand new project using ServeNet, and this is the ServeNet dialog box. I have other videos out that show you more detail information on starting ServeNet from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is go check my settings. I'm going to set to a grid. This is in Massachusetts. It's a grid. I'm going to produce a 2D, 1D model, which is what I use for all on-ground surveys, surveys. The 3D model is when you're using vector data only. Input files. I have these checked off to use v GPS vector data if they're available in the raw file. There aren't any in these raw files. Again, this raw file is an EDM traverse, on the ground traverse. So I'm just going to jump to reprocessing and a look, point out this number substitution string. I use the code CHK. By default, is is an equal sign when you first load up the software. I like the CHK because I add that as a code to the code table, and then it brings in those points on a separate layer with a separate symbol. So that's why I use CHK. So the standard error is the most important thing. This is my default standard error. Um, I think the default from Carlson is actually a little tighter than this. The horizontal pointing and vertical pointing and reading are both three seconds. So the pointing error is um, your ability to point. Um, this is actually a five second gun. So I'm going to change that reading to five seconds for both. It's not a three second gun. 
And then I'm going to leave the rest of these on the default, and that's the target centering, instrument centering, and target height, instrument height, and the coordinate standard errors. Now, this is where this particular project is, this comes into play. The default standard errors are plus or minus 100. So I've got a northing easting of 100 and the elevation of 200. So that's a normal default control standard error. So in, in many cases, your control points are the more rigid points that you want to hold in your traverse. Your EDM is going to match up to those, but you're going to adjust your EDM traverse to those control points. So they're going to stay fairly static. You can select individually control points to hold fixed so they don't move at all. And um, everything gets tied to that or anchored to that one control point or two or three or whatever you pick. Uh, so I'm going to start with just this, uh, knowing already that it's going to have troubles. Under the drawing settings, I have everything turned on for now. I'll come back to that in a minute. And for output, I am not storing coordinates yet. I always like to do the uh, adjustments first, and then when I'm happy with everything, the last step will be to store those in the coordinate file. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to add in a raw data file. And it's this file here, which is the field adjusted traverse. I'm just going to go into this file and take a look at it. You can see I started with point number, or the crew started actually, shouldn't take all the credit for this, started with point 104 and 107, and what they did is they entered in the GPS target uh, coordin coordinates for those two points. So that's their starting point, and they looped around this traverse. I have the side shots turned off for simplicity. I can turn them on just to show you the amount of detailed information in there, but I like a clean screen to work with. So I turn the side shots off. And they ran this loop around and tied back into points uh, 213 and 214, which were GPS points, and shot it as points 132 and 133. So what I'm going to do is just run a quick process with no adjustment and click this option to report closure and just simply put in my reference closing point which is point 214. And if I hit OK it asks me to uh, confirm the traverse and I always like to put it on prompt and it does a pretty good job of going through the data set and finding your beginning and ending traverse points but I still like to put it on prompt so when I hit OK, I get a graphic that confirms I do, in fact, have all the correct points in the correct order. Over here on the side, you can reorganize them if need be. So I'm just going to hit OK. And take a look at my closure error. And you can see I have a closure error of it mostly all in easting by 48 hundredths. It's almost half a foot. So that's not going to be acceptable poor precision here, one in 9,600 feet, because my two beginning points had some error in there, and then as I traversed around, just accumulated error to the point that we got up to half a foot. If I go back out of this here real quick, and I'm just going to do a quick print of the data, you can see occupying point 204 and backsiding point 207, and right here is the horizontal error on the very first setup. So there's already starting off with 500. Let me close out of that. I use the code CHK as a substitution string, so I'm going to add that to point 214, which tells the program that point 133 is, in fact, the same as 214. And up here is point number 213, likewise, point 132 is the same as 213, so I'm going to change that to a CHK. One other thing I'm going to do is allow ServeNet to use the GPS control points themselves and not the points entered into the raw file. 
So I am going to simply take the two points, 104 and 107, and change them to a DS code. And they turn green, so it becomes just basically a note. I save that and close. What I'm going to do is add these existing control points, these existing GPS points, as a control file. So I can hit either I can I either highlight this and hit add control file or I can hit the plus. Hit add control file and there's my control file with my points in it. Double double click on this and take a look at the control points that are in there. There are some detail points that uh, paint stripes and other checkpoints for the drone capture. But the points I'm interested in are points 201 to point 214. So the first thing I always do is a blunder detection. And I reprocess the data and I put port proximity search up to a tenth. So it will find any other possible redundant points. By looking at the error report, I can scan the raw data and examine horizontal and vertical errors that exist. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try to process this now, see what I get for a result. If I click on my results tab, you can see here that it's failed the chi-square test, and I'm on the high end of things. So that's definitely something I want to take a look at. I'm going to print this out and look at this results a little bit closer. I can see that the standard error of weight for both the coordinates and distances are well beyond the value of 1, meaning that the program is weighting these values to a greater extent than what is expected from the standard errors entered. In other words, the data is not meeting the expected results. So again, in this particular case, we realize that since the control points were located by GPS with an inherent error, the control coordinates in a survey like this are going to be less accurate than the EDM traverse itself. So I'm going to go back into my settings, and I go back into my standard errors, and I'm going to put my coordinate standard errors to a more reasonable value that I would expect out of these control points. So what this does is set values to the point that my EDM measurements will have be weighted more heavily than the control points themselves. I'm just going to go ahead and draw this network just so you can see what I have. And I'm going to quickly go back into my drawing settings here and let me just turn off the side shots and the side shot lines. Okay, and just redraw that. That simplifies things, but you can see the size of the error ellipsis getting larger as we head towards these control points. So now that I have changed my control standard errors, I am going to readjust this. You see all the error ellipses get much, much smaller, and we now have a passing chi-square test. And it passes right at about a 6, and the value should be between a 0.48 and a 11.14, so we're just about in the middle, which is about where you want to be, or towards the low end is fine. You just don't want to be pushing it towards the higher end. As an added test, I can run the Alter report by going back into settings. Under adjustment, I click on relative error points file. And this is for the a setup for the Alter report. I'm going to hit select and create one. I'm going to call this RTK control. And it creates one. I hit edit. And I'm going to add the point number connections which matter to me the most. Now these are going to be all my traverse points, uh, side shots, and GPS points. Those happen to fall in with a point range of 0. 0.100 to 299. I hit add by 
point number. If there were individual selections that I wanted to make towards other side shots and whatnot, I could add those in there as well. And I hit save and OK. And I process one more time. If I look at my main report, now I can scroll down. And here's my alter report. My, and here's the alter requirements, and that is plus or minus seven hundredths of 50 parts per million at 95% level. And statement, all possible connections between the following points were checked, and all connections passed. If a connection failed, you would see a list of the connections with an asterisk next to them in the um, respective residuals shown on each one. So that is one method of making use of ServNet and a least squares adjustment to fit your traverse onto existing GPS control points.